have four board members here, three present, one, uh, the fourth is in the building. And now we're ready for our uh, workshop, our four o'clock workshop that uh, started just a little bit late and I turn it over to Dr. Marsden. Thank you, Dr. Hill. And so for some time, the board has, uh, you know, entertained the idea of uh, looking closely into the benefits of uh, solar and utilizing solar. Many districts uh, across the state and nation have uh, entered into a variety of different types of agreements around solar and you know that we've had a lot of effort going on in place with uh, you know our our behaviors with uh, a group that's uh, helped us to bring our energy usage down significantly you know one of the things i learned in my experiences was if you can get staff to first you know change their behaviors to use less energy then solar in turn becomes more uh, impactful uh, rather than you just kind of have solar as a, you know, outcome uh, and then try to change behaviors. It's tough to do. So I think we're in a really good place to uh, take this on. So a uh, subcommittee of the boards looked at this, and, uh, and now we are prepared with a presentation. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Poiker. Thank you, Dr. Marston. Um, as, as the superintendent commented, this is a follow-up from the subcommittee regarding solar and some recommendations. Um, and Barbara Flores and uh, Linda Savage was on that. Um, in front of you, we are going to cover the four categories today, which would have to do with the purpose, the potential, the process, and the timeline as it regards to solar in the school district. First one we want to cover is the, the purpose for which we're looking into solar and as, as, a, as a project. We want to reduce operation cost. That will help redirect resources to the district priorities and it will increase the environmental stewardship. And then it will also, as a bonus, provide a teaching tool along the STEM curriculum. And then we wanted to also talk about the potential. So we're in a situation where we can take advantage of a unique um, opportunity, and that's to utilize federal investment tax credit of 30%. This is available for investors until December of 2016. That allows districts to get a really good um, contract related to a power purchase agreement. We can reduce our current kilowatt cost of um, right now, we have a blended rate of 23 cents district-wide. So some sites are higher, some are lower, but that's our district-wide average kilowatt rate. Um, we're hearing there are some great uh, contracts out there for the power purchase agreements between 10 and 13 cents, and we think that we'll be able to secure something like that for some of our school sites. There's also a potential for no escalator, and as you know, with um, our provider, our um, utility provider, there's always an increase in cost over time. So if we can secure no escal escalator, that is a win-win. And that could provide an estimated savings of up to 40% for some of our school site um, on the energy cost. We anticipated that someone may want to know how much do we currently spend on electricity. It's 9.6 million. And as Dr. Marsden stated, we've done a great job containing those costs and minimizing those costs through our energy management program. Even though we've added uh, school sites and, and buildings, we've kept that cost pretty stable over the last three years. Some examples of potential uh, savings. I spoke with Temecula. They just got a um, contract for 12.9 <coughs> cents per kilowatt hour with no escalator for 20 years, so that is excellent, and that's what we'll be looking for. I talked with the energy manager at in Himmet, <coughs> and they both, part of their energy management program includes solar, and over the last several years, they've had a 25% reduction in electrical consumption. Okay, so at this point, we'll take you through what our recommended process is. 
What we, we've had a long-term relationship with what <laughs> used to be called URS and is now called AECOM. With that merger, uh, they have brought on a resource that didn't exist uh, and before, which is a division of, of AECOM, which specializes in solar. It would be our recommendation that we would continue with that relationship in this area to keep us neutral and uh, have an objective party and, and w help us manage through this. We would, uh, they would be responsible for development and specifications and the management of the bid. They would help identify target sites and do those assessments and produce the savings. One of the things we want to avoid as a district with some type of consultants is they have a tendency to overstate and uh, build actually more solar than you need, that which helps them get to a higher level of a project. With having a neutral party that is not involved in the direct construction, which would be AECOM, we can maintain that neutrality. They, again, they would be doing the feasibility assessments and financial uh, analysis. One of the important things to us as a district is to have a competitive and open bidding process and select and evaluate a qualified provider. Provider. This would allow us the opportunity to, to use local vendors and any other people or companies or entities that are qualified to uh, not only they have DSA experience, but they can put together the proper team to really benefit uh, the school district. And they also, AECOM would help us through the negotiation process. And again, they're, they're operating as a representative of the district and not the construction owners. So it again helps us get to where we need to be. Can I add something? We also Please. have a financial advisor that will assist us with the contract analysis. And we need someone that's gonna dig into the company's financial position as well, because we wanna ensure that maintenance and all of that will continue to take place. You know, you have the equipment for 20 years, you wanna ensure that they're maintaining it and they're able to uh, sustain that. And on slide number uh, seven, it represents the, the timelines that we are looking at. We feel that we'll bring a contract back to the board uh, within the next 40 days, uh, and it'll also include the assessments. Within the next 65 days, we'll be able to have the request for proposal and run the competitive bid. And with the overseeing of the design and construction to grid, would be another 230 days. This would allow us the opportunity to take advantage of any tax credits uh, that, that might expire um, a year from December. So it, we, we'd still hit our timelines. And at this time, I would entertain any uh, questions from, from the board. Uh, thank you for the report. Uh, one of the things I think that we discussed was the fact that, and I think people would like to understand the fact that we're not going to, Armelia? Yeah, you're We're not going to every school because we don't need to, because we have so many good situations already started at so many of our schools that we're probably talking only about 20, 25% of our schools that we really need to have this. Yes, um, uh, the last time we did the assessment, it was right around 11 sites. Okay, yeah. Um, and along with the new schools that have been put in over the last couple of years, they do eat, meet the energy requirements for LEAF and are certified. The modernizations that took place in the school district, which was upwards around 50, um, when we had the opportunity to, we also put in energy efficient air conditioners, uh, weather sealing, and in lighting that has helped lower our footprint already. So we want to make sure that we financially don't just go in and put a project on a school site just to have solar. That's why the financial advisor and also the assessments would be done at every school site to develop the list to prove that it was financially viable. Also, I wanted to say that I think that making sure that we have this uh, no escalator as far as the, the uh, 
the amount, you know, or for each year going up, because we all know whenever we look at the prices of our energy bills, how much they're going up year after year, that I know that that'll be a major aspect of our coming back. I, I, I am very pleased that AECOM is working with us because IRS has worked with us for so long on so many other projects that they will be a neutral one. I feel confident about this. Uh, I think you mean URS, yeah. not IRS. Uh, yeah, IRS, URS, <laughs> yes. So, you know, I, I think that uh, I'm glad we're working with them to do that. Thank you both for all the time you're spent. Yes. Uh, I would just like uh, clarification. <clears throat> um, the proof of concept um, that AECOM is going to conduct, it's just for clarification for everybody, will be to develop or identify target sites throughout the district, correct? Yes. Okay, so it could be 11, it could be 20, it could be whatever, and then they're going to provide the cost savings and et cetera. Am I to understand that? Yes, per site. Per site, per site, okay. And not just the cost savings, but what it would cost to also implement, um, you know, the whatever they're going to do in terms of whether the solar panels are going to be on the ground or whether they're going to be on the roof and the maintenance. Um, I guess I'm also understanding that too, right? They're going to include how that will be, uh, how they will be maintained and, and uh, kept safe. Yes, that will be part of the bidding process and the negotiations later on. Okay, all right, all right, okay, good. That's good, and um, I'm really excited because it will be really helpful to us and we will, you know, we'll even be energy saving more so than we have been. I mean, I, we've gotten an award from Synergistics, so this will be an additional uh, cost savings. I think that's good, and, that, and then more money for our kids. Absolutely. Go to the sites. Yeah. And Thank you so much for the wonderful. Yeah. You did a great job. <laughs> okay, Ms. Savage. I just wanted to say that on the purpose side, there provide teaching environment for STEM. I mean, yes. you know, wow. You know, look what you can do with the kids. Thank well, you. Well, Dr. Marston, a number of years ago, brought up that it'd be great if there was a visual and an interaction with STEM and the the actual power that was being produced by the grid every day yeah. at that school That's site. Right. So Absolutely. there's a great opportunity here for the students. So we walk the talk? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ms. Rogers? I just had a question about redirecting the resources. Is there anything in particular that would be, you know, on the radar, what we would do with the cost savings of what we're doing? I think that would be a joint process of existing committees and, and um, uh, initiatives that are already going on in the, the district, which would be decided by those committees and recommended to the Board of Education. Okay. Great job. Thank you. And I also want to say uh, thank you for a great, great wonderful presentation. Uh, I just have two questions. Will this result in some local job opportunities for the citizens in the area. And I certainly hope it won't mean we are gonna lose employees because of the solar. Well, we're not losing any employees because of the solar. And, and uh, those will be factors that we can take into to account when we're going through this bidding process. Okay. Uh, we still must go after the, the qualified individuals. So yes, they're, there, we're, we're aware of at least one company that has an opportunity here locally. Great. And the other thing I have, uh, and I certainly hope you keep this close and near and dear to you, the beautification. Because I, you know, sometimes I drive and I look at some solar and I say, oh, that's pretty neat. And I look at some, I say, oh my gosh, I wouldn't want that on the front of my house. Right. You know, so, uh, <laughs> so the design of where you put them, I hope we can still have our schools look like schools. You know, once it's done. And thank you for bringing that up. One of the advantages of using AECOM is that the, the pre-design is something that the bidders have to meet. So we will take into account the appearance of our campuses. And as you do that, would it also allow you an opportunity to remove some of those air conditioning units that's on the front of the schools as a distraction now? I'm not sure that's in the scope of this pro <laughs> project right now. Well, I just want to get as much bang as we can out of this. Okay, uh, 
uh, cabinet, what about you? Any questions? Okay. And those of us in the audience, let's hear from you, please. Yeah, please, yeah, please use the microphone. Thank you, Ron. Uh, Mr. Fletcher. Okay, hey, Ron Fletcher, and I have a question that uh, was almost taken away from me there. Provide teaching environment for STEM. Does this mean that we're going to be able to teach some of our high school seniors how to work with solar? There, a great question, Ron. Uh, there already is a um, career path that's being developed and it may already be in the school district for solar. What this, I, I do not set the, um, the career paths, or, but I'm, this is an opportunity for the STEM uh, teaching and so those could be developed as part of this process, but I, I don't want to limit them at this point. Just I, I, oh, go ahead. I, I was just going to mention that when, when we went to a royal a high school, we, we observed um, a solar uh, max uh, uh, person um, conducting class, and I think that was one of their pathways. Was that up, that's, Dr. Marshall? <clears throat> that's actually what I was going to comment on, Dr. Flores. Yeah. Uh, they have the core uh, <laughs> academy, which is a career path at a royal valley high school. It is on renewable energy. We have a partner with, partnership with Solar Max where they're training our students, actually taking them out to observe installations, and then giving them, they've said that if they go through the entire career path, they will hire them. And then if they want to continue, they'll actually pay for their college and, and continue to train them. So it's a great example of a partnership. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Fletcher. Anyone else? Mrs. Fletcher, I guess you're the only one over there. <laughs> okay. I mean, I mean, Michelle, I'm sorry. Rochelle. Okay, with that, I want to thank you so much. Thank you for a job well done. Thank you. Okay. Take care.